What's going on guys, King Shrats here back in the video on the channel and today, listen, this is like, it's late night, only means I went to one place, I had a very long day, I had a lot of stuff to do, I looked up, it was 2 o'clock in the morning, that means I only got one option, really three options, but we did tacos a couple of days, well last week I had tacos uh, with my bro Sam and the dad I've eaten like 67 times, this I've only eaten like 14 times, so we went back to my favorite late night spot, Chili Chili Deli and Grill, located in Patterson, New Jersey. Got something new, but of course I had to get the OG. Last time they put salad on it, so I made sure I didn't get no salad on it this time. But it's my favorite platter in the world, man. I'm, I'm feel good doing this because I'm exhausted and I got a lot of weird or crazy kind of stuff to talk about. Anyway, we also got two other things today. Let me show you what else we got and we can get into this video because I just want to eat, bro. I am parched, famished, all of those words of the above. This right here, my boys and ladies, is a Philly cheesesteak with a side of their seasoned fries. Their Philly is pretty good. I know Philly might get mad at me for saying that, but it, I mean, it's not, a, it's a cheesesteak, bro. I don't know. Then y'all get, you know, I know how y'all feel with that one. Anyway, second one. I've never had this before and I don't know what the hell to expect, but that's why we have this wonderful job that we have. This is a meatball sandwich. I don't know what the hell to think about this meatball sandwich, but we're going to try it today. And then last, of course, of course, of course, this right here, my, my, my people, I don't want to say ladies and gentlemen again, but I just said it is the best platter around in my opinion this is the mixed platter so we have the lamb and the chicken over rice with the white sauce extra white sauce of course for the white sauce on top of the white sauce yep uh i remember a couple of videos ago i had white sauce and it was gross and everybody said you should have tried it beforehand and y'all are 100 percent right but i know this white sauce is fire so i ain't gonna load it up oh my goodness i'm so ready for this i'm so ready for this drop a thumbs up and you guys already know the vibes let's eat let's talk a lot of stuff. Crazy day. Ugh. Yes. Here we go. You ready? Let, let. Got the plastic spoon. Don't care right now. I'm not getting up again. Get in here for this. Yeah. Yeah, I make you feel better. I make you feel better. Their white sauce is nice and garlicky. It is flavorful. Thank goodness. Oh, hi. Super tender on the gyro or euro meat. Spiced up well. And then of course the chicken also spiced and seasoned and not dry that's the way you want mm. in a platter that's the way you want this always comes with salad if you want salad i don't like salad so i don't get salad sometimes i'll ask them for extra rice but i did not today mm. i've given this a 10 every time i've rated it I'm going to continue to give it a 10. It is every bit of a 10 that a 10 can get. I've yet to find mm, a better platter. Mm. That's just the real. Got the Philly cheesesteak, ribeye meat with the seasoned fries. Their fries are always a hit. There's a cheesesteak. Yeah. Peppers, onions. Bread is nice and soft. Now, see that lip. Some of y'all don't like toasted bread. I do. This isn't toasted, but it is warm and it is soft. Pepper and onions. Cheese. Philly look away. It's mayo. Philly look away. It's ketchup. I'm not really a ketchup guy, but I do like it on a cheesesteak. A lot of people prefer their chicken cheesesteak, which is really good. I got it last time. I think the Philly is better. And then the seasoned fries. I'm pretty sure that those are the Walmart seasoned fries. I'm okay with that. If y'all don't know, Walmart seasoned fries look very much like this. If you get them. 
and it's like, I don't know what they cost anymore. I want to say for a big bag, it's like three or four dollars, but I could be wrong because it's been a while. And we know them food prices, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm hungry as hell, man. I don't know why. I'm usually not hungry, but 2 a.m. Been doing a lot of stuff all day. Poverty Cola. I'm sorry, this isn't even cola, it's seltzer. Again, I'm tired. We don't even got time for the cup today. This Philly, probably, seven and a half, being fair. I've got every cheesesteak. It's a good cheesesteak, but I've had some crazy cheesesteaks in my life. But again, at 2 a.m., to get a seven and a half, a solid, good cheesesteak, with some fries. I'm not mad at that because this is why I was really here. And now this is where the fun begins. Is a meatball. Meatball parm. Um, I never even saw this on the menu, but they apparently have a meatball parm. And it's your standard fair meatball parm. So it's got the melted. I don't know what this is going to be. Much. It could be provolone. I'm not 100% sure. This bread is actually toasted, though. Like it. Noticeable. And it has marinara and, of course, they're meatballs, and they are beef meatballs. Um, most of these delis that you have in Patterson are halal, so you're not going to get any pork, just so people know that. It's, it's, it tastes like I'll eat it, being real. Honestly, their bread is better when it's not toasted. But I think they panini this. You see how flat on the bottom? Which, the meatballs are pretty dry. There's also not enough sauce on here. And I'm not really getting a lot of cheese. I mean, y'all can get a look in here. Y'all think I'm crazy? This is a little bit better than like a franchise meatball. Like, not quite Subway bad, but. Firehouse might be better. It's not great. But again, it's not inedible. And if you're hungry and you got it, you'd probably still eat it. But it doesn't hold a candle to the other stuff. Like, I'll give it a five. Like, it's a right, it's just, it's. They gotta do something about the sauce, though. Because there's either A, not enough of it, or B, it just doesn't taste like anything. But as you can tell, I'm hungry because I ate still half the damn sandwich. And I'll probably still eat it. Normally on Fridays, uh, recently we've been doing an unfiltered. Um, I just want y'all to know because some people think that if my friends aren't here, that I don't have any friends, are we fighting? A lot of people thought me and my bro was fighting because he ain't been on the videos. Um, He's on vacation. Like, he literally, you know, went on a vacation. So, he ain't around. And that's cool. He got a vacation with his family. That's cool. So, anybody think... Some people... Because I don't broadcast or anything. And he wasn't, like, doing videos and stuff for a while. And it's like... Are y'all fighting? I'm going to be honest with you. We've never had a fight. Like, not a legitimate one. We've disagreed on things like normal people do. But... I guess because we're just two people that are very similar minded that if you have a disagreement, like you could just talk about it and come to a resolution. Like we've never legitimately gone at any point like fighting. I know I'm going to talk about friendship and stuff like that, but to me, that's how you know who your friends are. People fight, but when you really are just cool with people, like I don't fight with my family either. Like if I can't get along with people, I don't talk to them. So. I don't like to tone police anybody else, but anybody in my life that's a part of my life, there's no real fights. Of course, yeah, you're going to disagree on stuff. Everybody disagrees. I disagree with my family 
my friends I've disagreed with women I've dated um but if I disagree with somebody and they do and we can't come to the table and have a conversation like yo what do you want you know I don't really think that person really rocks with you personally people talk about emotional intelligence and they talk about maturity and things like that I have immature moments like I'm a human being and when I say immature it's more stuff like I laugh at third grade jokes <laughs> you know what I'm saying but I just think that at this point in my life as opposed to like when I was a teenager there's nothing to get too worked up about if somebody is a part of your life that you feel like they're not being fair towards you and you have a choice in the matter I'm not talking about like your parents <laughs> like if if you live with them and stuff but you might just want to think about not being a part of that person's life no more you'll find you'll be a lot happier when you don't stress about stuff and you got people around you that aren't like toxic I know it's easier said than done but you can pick your friends and they say you can't pick your family I don't really agree with that. You can pick your family. Like, they'll always be blood, but that don't make them family. I don't know who need to hear that. But not all blood is your family. If you got family around you that's really not doing right by you, I've heard stories from other people and I've witnessed stuff where, where family members will do some really shady, backstabbing type of stuff. You know, I've seen people's own brothers, own cousins grandparents parents and you know you feel like you can't turn your back on them yes you can unless they're your kids you're obligated to take care of your kids it's a whole different thing you got kids to take care of your kids because you brought them into this world that's your job to raise them that job is that's your job that's the job you chose that's the job you took but other than that it is what it is, man. A lot of people I've spoken to on streams, on here, in comments, you'll say things like that. And I won't get into the crazy stuff, but if you think I talk to all my family, I don't. You know what I'm saying? Because if they ain't going to do the right thing, you got to do what you got to do. You know? Ain't no animosity, ain't no ill will, ain't no, it's just... You got to do what's best. So, I don't know how I just went on that. That's because these things ain't scripted. They're never scripted, so. Legit had a topic I wanted to talk about today, too. Like, I've had maybe 10 conversations about this all day. Whether it was at work, and I've just been talking to everybody about it. I had to stop that. I don't know if it's sort of junk cut. This, I'm always on with y'all. I don't like to stop the tape. I like to do everything in at least one or two takes. I only stop the tape for two reasons. Number one, it's like a bookmark when I finish reviewing things so I can cut it into shorts easier. I just stopped it again. Number two, I don't like burping on camera. Sometimes you get a little one and it is ways you let it go, but if I have soda, like I just got a little air, I just had to burp, so I let it out. I be telling people that stuff. I'm always honest, bro, but I just missed my whole mouth. The topic that I was talking about all day today. I did not know this until today. Some of y'all might because you're still younger. Maybe you're in school. Some of y'all might have kids. But I'm neither. So I didn't know this. Apparently in a lot of school systems now. They only drop people's grades to 50. Like if you don't do anything in class, you get a 50. Like, you can't get a zero? Now, I don't know if that's in every school system, but I have clients and people who, like, um, obviously solicit the business. may not be my clients, but they're clients of the business. A lot of them are teachers. And apparently around here, that's a thing. I don't know if that's, like, everywhere. Grade systems for people, maybe you're not from here. We do letters. And it's been for a while. How I grew up was... 
90 to 99 percent was an A. 80 to 89 percent was a B. I have to go through the whole thing. I'm still doing it. This is where it gets weird. 72 to 79 was a C. In some places, that's where it was for me. 71 to 65 is a D, and then anything below it has an F. So you can get a 64, it's an F, or you can get a 2, it's an F. So apparently now, no matter what you do in school, meaning you can literally not show up, you don't have to be in a class. You get a 50. I think I'm becoming like that old man Clint Eastwood get off my lawn age. Because to me, that's absolutely wild. And I couldn't believe it. And a lot of the teachers that I talk to actually do agree with it. Now, obviously, there's nuance to that. Like, there's there's details and things that may necessarily people don't hold into account. But I've always been a firm believer. You got to earn. Like, you shouldn't get a single point without trying. Like, you shouldn't. It just shouldn't be that way. I think you have to, like, this is a definitely a millennial and older mindset. I know there's still Gen Zers that think like this, so I'm not calling, but for the most part, it's an old school mindset. And I'm old school with certain things for sure. But you can't give people participation trophies. I don't agree with it. You should not get rewarded above. Meaning, when I say above, they say participation trophies. Like, they talk about field day, which is real popular. I don't know if people stay. I think they still have field day. But first place, second place, third place, you get a ribbon. A ribbon. And then nobody else gets nothing. And now, they give people rewards just for, like, doing it. I don't believe in that. And it's not because I'm rude. I just personally believe that you have to teach children how to deal with failure. You have to lose. You have to know what it feels like to lose. You have to be aware that you can lose. You're setting people up, in my opinion, for failure in the long run if they can't deal with getting the short end of the stick, as they say. I also found out today, same conversation, that in Little League, which is like the youth baseball, ages 9 through 12, that if you're on the team, you have to play. This is probably going to upset some people, because I know some of y'all might have kids that are that age, but this is an open discussion. I don't like that. When I was a kid, if you weren't good, you didn't play. I don't think you deserve things just for showing up. You deserve an equal opportunity. You deserve an equal shot, for sure. But that's all you're guaranteed in life, is that, hopefully, if you show up, you you have a chance of being some, getting something out of it. But to me, life is more about what you do when you get there. Showing up is like, they say it's half the battle. I don't think it's half the battle. You can talk about bare minimum. Showing up is a bare minimum. And I think I've noticed a lot more with younger kids that they, like, expect rewards just for doing stuff. And I just don't think that that's going to set you up in the long run to actually understand that you have to work for things. I think everybody, again, should have an equal access to things and equal opportunity to things. And I know that's not true, but you should at least have an opportunity to play. That's the fair part. Because later on in life, if you show up to work and you're the worst employee there, you're going to get fired. If you go to college, they don't give 50s out in college. You can get a zero and no one's going to care. So the more you coddle people, in my opinion, the less successful they'll end up being when they get older because they'll feel like everyone's against them. I hate to tell you this. This is more for the younger people, the older people. I know you, everyone is against you. <laughs> like, that's the way it is. Nobody owes you anything. You're not going to get anything. And you're going to have to earn whatever you get. Unless you're a part of a select people that were born with a silver spoon, most of us, 
or middle class and below. We ain't getting nothing. And you're going to have to earn it. And if you come in with the mindset like, well, I mean, I was here. At least I'm here. I think that's why things on the surface level don't seem the way they used to be. People just show up to stuff now. And they expect. It's like that in the relationship conversations that we had. There's a lot of men and women out there who think being in a relationship means you just, like, having access to them is the privilege of a relationship. But that's not really what it is. Relationships are work. Work is work. You show up to work. I don't care what you do for a living. If you suck at it, you're going to get fired. That's the way it goes. People talk, well, what if I don't go to college? Say you went to become a carpenter. And now you're a carpenter and you're, you know, sawing beams to put in somebody's house. And your beams are off. <laughs> like, they're they're uneven. And then the house is wrong. And then you're going to start over. You're fired. They're not going to be like, oh, you tried. I think as kids, we should encourage them to do better. We should correct things when they need to get better. We should be honest about things when they need to get better. If you're a player on, on a baseball team and you're playing Little League and you can't hit and you can't field, like, maybe give them some practice. And I understand not everybody is athletically gifted, but baseball is not for everybody. But you've got to learn real quick. If you're not good enough, then you either work to get better or you do something else. And if you don't do that, you're just going to sit there waiting for somebody to give you a chance for something. Because that free at-bat you get in Little League is not going to happen in high school, and it's not going to happen in the next level of anything. And you're going to wonder why, because you didn't work at anything. Why you're not playing? Those same kids get to high school and are like, oh, well, the coach don't like me. Listen, I've been asking my whole life. I have heard the coach don't like me a billion times. I, I'm, I'm going to say this as nice as I can. I'm getting to camera for this. Coach don't care if you, he don't, if you, half my coaches didn't like me. I still played. You know why you didn't play? Because you're not good enough. I've had coaches that we couldn't stand each other. But when it was game time, let's go, let's get to work. Because no coach in anything is going to just play favorites to lose. Your attitude may keep you off the field. Your ability won't. Like, I'll put it this way. You got two kids of equal skill. Equal, like, they're both the same level. They're both rated 75 players in the sport. The kid with a better attitude probably will play. The kid he can trust more probably will play. But I watch so many people, again, I play football in college, man. I heard this story a time and time again. Don't, don't like me. He only want to play this kid. Because he was a five-star recruit. Mm -hmm. That five-star recruit might get a chance before you do, for sure. Because that's based off their resume, right? Work is the same way. The person with the better resume might get an opportunity before you do. And you may not get a chance. But you're going to get a chance. What you do with that chance is going to make or break your whole career. When I got to my school, I was third in a depth chart. When I walked on campus. Did I think the kids in front of me were better than me? Mm-mm. Did I complain about it? Mm-mm. I just said I'm going to kick their ass in practice. By week four, I was starting. I never gave my spot back. There are actual articles printed about this. This is not a joke. Like, I don't talk about all this stuff, but... In the article, the first week I started playing, I think I had like 10 or 11 tackles. Which, you know, is a good game. But we lost. So I wasn't happy. The next week we played, we played the number one ranked team in the country at the time. And I had the same good game. And I had an interview in the paper. Just like the, uh, the, the paper. There's nothing else to say. So I didn't know at the time because I only was speaking for myself. But the article came out a week later. And my head coach, I'll never forget this because that was one of the proudest things I felt because it was like, to earn something, you feel so accomplished doing it, right? So my coach said, more or less, every time we turned on the film in practice, he was always on the tape doing something. We had no choice. Like, we had to give him a chance. That's what it is. The reason that I had that mindset is because I was my whole life, if I failed, I either got better or shut up. 
definitely were times where I felt like I was better than the person that played, but I never, I just worked harder. And sometimes people need to work harder. To me, there's rarely a person who gives it everything they have that complains. Most people are complaining. You want a chance, but you're not really doing everything you want to do. Like in your heart of hearts, you know that. I don't really believe that a person who genuinely applies himself in school will fail, especially not elementary school and especially not in high school. If that teacher sees you're sitting in the front of the class, you're asking questions, you're engaged, you're writing notes, it's really hard to fail. But if you're a person who sits in the back of the class, you're talking the entire time, different. But I can guarantee you, if that teacher sees you're doing all the work, you're showing up on time, you're talking, you know, my old school coaches always sit in front of the class, they always say stuff like that, but it's the truth. If that teacher sees you doing all that stuff, they will pull you to the side because they know you're trying. But a lot of people aren't really trying. They're half-assing it and, and, and getting mad because they're failing. If you want to succeed in something, bro, you got to be all in. And the truth is, my parents preached that to me my whole life. And I was hard-headed, so I didn't really learn. And it was funny because when I was in high school, this is how I really learned it. This quote stuck with me till this day. I said it today, too, because it's the first thing that always comes up. So we had a former New York Giant football player. We were very lucky. He was older at the time, but he had won two Super Bowls in the 80s with the Giants. So by the time he got there, he was an older gentleman. But he had a lot of tidbits and stuff, you know, obviously from game experience. Like to be on two Super Bowls, dope. Anyway, the whole point, of it, one day he ran our conditioning in football. Like we were running sprints and, and gassers, which is like really long sprints and up downs, which they, they, it's burpees, which is an up down. Um, and I remember I had finished my sprint. So my hands on my knees and, you know, I'm breathing hard, but he's like two feet away from me, bro. And there's like four or five kids that are like walking and like kind of just like, you know, rolling their eyes and you could see it. And, you know, they were frustrated because it was tough. And he said under his breath, he was like, those are the same four kids that are complaining that they don't play. And it was true because I knew them. I was in with the high school with them. And then he said something that stuck with me forever. He goes, everybody wants to get to the show, but nobody wants to pay the admission. And he was just like, that's what he said. Like He, he like said it like huffy, but I heard it. I was like, and I remember I was like, what, 15, 16 at the time. I was like, bro, that's the realest I've heard because it's so true. Everybody wants success. Like everybody wants to be in great shape. Everybody wants to be a millionaire. Everybody wants to you know, be successful at something. But of those people who really want to do it, most of them ain't doing nothing to do it. You're just saying that and then being like, okay, I'll start next week. And, and you don't really do anything. And then you get mad that it's not like, I'm going to tell you this because I've failed at things a thousand times in my life. I've had a business that didn't do well. Um, you know, I, I've, you know, not, I didn't go into college as a starter. I remember when I thought I should have been all state in high school. I wasn't, I can name a thousand things. And I used to be, be down about it. But after that, I just applied myself more. And even when I did fail, I never really felt bad. I couldn't hold my head down because I gave it everything I had, you know. And, and I was fortunate enough to get to play in. I dreamed of, of playing on, in college and playing in, on TV and playing. I got to play in a national championship. And we lost that game. And it sucked. Losing in a championship game to get that far and come in second, it is one of the Every Super Bowl I watch, I'm like, man, I know what that feels because it sucks. It really does because you had such a great season and it's like one or two plays. You think about 49ers this year in the Super Bowl, they lost in overtime and it was like, you know, people want to blame the coaches. I get that, but you were that close. You took them all the way to overtime, a couple missed plays here and you lose. And that's how it happens. But after the game, even though I was upset after like a week or so, because it still sucks, I didn't really have anything to feel bad about because I know when I was out there, I gave everything I had. Everything. So, even when you fail sometimes, when you know you gave it all you had, it doesn't feel as bad as when you, like, expected it. Because you worked for it. There's something to be learned from defeat. And a lot of people are so afraid to fail that they don't try. And I knew from when I heard that from him that if I was going to not be the best or, not, or, or fail at something, it wasn't going to be for lack of effort. The one thing you cannot coach, the one thing you cannot 
like it's the most intangible thing is effort. Even somebody with mediocre to, to little talent with maximum effort, desire, and want to, you'll end up somewhere. But I've seen in my life, I've played with players that were so talented that they never played because they didn't care, bro. They didn't know no effort. And they always complain. I played with five-star recruits in college, bro, and some of them never played. They never saw a down of football. But I can tell you why. Because they just thought they could show up. You know why that happened? Because nobody ever told them you can't just show up. And they got away with it only for a certain amount of time. But by the time you get with the big boys and you're playing with players that they may not be as skilled as you, but they're, the, the gap is not that wide. When you get to college, a five-star recruit and a four-star recruit and a three-star recruit, the difference between them might be measurables, might be where you're from, but there's not that much of a difference. There are three-star recruits with crazy sprinting of, of speed and agility. Trust me. They just like that. So you can't get away with those things like you used to. So I don't believe in that 50% culture, man. I just want to say that. I know if a kid is trying, and definitely if, if you know kids have stuff maybe at the home or maybe they're getting, they're getting you know messed with in school or whatever, you work with those kids, but you help them earn. You show them how to fish. You don't give them the fish. You get what I'm saying? I don't have a problem with helping, but you got to teach them to earn. That's just my opinion, bro. I wanted to talk about that because I've been talking about this all day. You could tell it got me all fired up, but um, this meal's a W, except for the mid balls. <laughs> but we'll be back, man. I love y'all. Y'all know the vibes. We'll be back tomorrow. More content, man. Hand signs. They made it to YouTube.